I'm with Mrs. Duff. Hi. I missed you this week. Did you miss me? I don't know if you're getting lots of hugs from your moms and dads, but reach out. Oh, give yourself a great big hug from all your teachers. Think about your teachers you're not seeing right now. They want hugs from you, too. I've got Miss Park here, Miss Bacon, and Mr. Trujillo, and Miss Park said Eli Anderson and Owen, who are kindergartners with us, might be watching, as well as their brothers and maybe some of their sisters. So I just wanted to give them a shout out, and Cassie sent me a wonderful message this morning. She's excited for the story today. Uh, before we get started, I want to just do a couple of things that we normally do. In our class here at Sequoia Elementary, we usually practice saying our months of the year and our days of the week almost every day. And I wonder how many of you have done that while you're out of school. Be honest. Not very many of you, I think. So I think it's probably important that we practice that right now. Now, because I don't want Mr. Trujillo to get all upset with me because I jump up and I'm moving all around. I am going to do all the motions while I'm sitting down here, so I'm not out of the picture. But I want you to stand up and do those with me. Ready? January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. Then you turn around once again. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. Then you turn around one more time. Slow motion. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. Then you turn around, sit down. Put your hands together, put them in your lap, just like if you were at school. Let's talk for a minute about what we're going to do today. I hope that you have your journal and something to write with. If you don't have a journal, we talked about that. You can use old mail. You can use anything that you have that just has a place to write on it um, for after our story. But also, we had to practice those months of the year because... It's the month of April now. When we finished up at school, we were in March. And April comes after March. And last time that we were together, I put some, I showed you some eggs that Miss Rader brought. And I put those eggs in the incubator last week. Well, this week, they're, they've been in there one week. So, I wanted to show you what they probably look like. I candled them last night, and almost all of them, had just a very, very small little chicken. I have this set of plastic eggs. Just looks like a regular egg, but when you pop it open on the inside, Mr. Trujillo, can you see that? On the inside is a little chick. Can you see that? That is what our chick looks like inside our egg right now. So I shined a little light at the bottom of the egg last night, and I could see the eyeball, and I could also see some blood vessels. You can't see that on here. But each chick, that's the way that they're getting their nutrients from the the yolk or the yeah the yolk of the egg. And then I also saw there was a little air pocket on each one of these. So they're kind of upside down like that in the incubator, and the incubator's turning them back and forth each day. So we'll just keep watching that and see how that goes. Now I have this wonderful calendar I printed out to show you the progress each day. But guess what? When I looked at it this morning, there is no way you can see it. You probably can't even see anything. So we'll just use this as scrap piece of paper. And I printed a calendar. It didn't print. And I'm just like you. I only have the things at my house. So I found a calendar that I use for school. And this one says April. You probably can't see all the little lines. But if your parents have a wall calendar, if you want to look at it and find April or May 1st, which will be like the la after the last day of April, that's going to be the day these chicks hatch. So you might ask your parents if they have a calendar at home. So you can mark off. We've had seven days, and we set them on the, t actually on the 10th, which was Good Friday. So that was a day we didn't have school. 
yeah, we don't have school any day right now, but we're having school on TV, right? So on the 10th, then the 17th, that's tomorrow. That'll be exactly one week. And the 24th will be two weeks. Then the first will be three weeks. And in 21 days, those eggs are going to hatch. So it's kind of exciting. You'll have to watch. And because I had that fancy one, I thought, oh, it's going to look so much better than that old ratty one I have in my classroom that I needed to redo and didn't have time to. But if you'll see, we're right here. And that's what I just showed you was that egg. So we're number seven on that those eggs. So if you want to keep watching on my story time with Mrs. Death page on Facebook, you are welcome to. And I'll kind of put, put some updates. Not a whole lot of exciting going on right now with that, though. So today we're going to have a story. And we're going to start to talk about seeds and things growing because this is the time of year that maybe your neighbors might be planting their gardens, grandmas, grandpas might be planting gardens. So I was kind of think, trying to sit on my back porch and think of a story to tell you. And then all of a sudden, all of these little, and where'd they go? My seeds disappeared. All of these little winged seeds blew across my back porch. And I don't mean there's just a couple. I mean, this wasn't all. They are all over my whole yard. And they blow in the wind like that. And when the wind catches them, they just blow across the field. Or they blow through my backyard. And actually, I went out. And I have a table with little holes. And they were stuck all in the little holes. It looked like the little holes had hair. It was kind of cute, actually. It looked like one of those Play-Doh guys that the hair sticks up out of. So we have some words we're going to use in the story. Seeds. Can you see the words and read those with me today? I don't know if you can see them. I kind of moved them and did them a little darker today. And I have a word that rhymes with seeds. It is weeds. Seeds. Weeds. Then I have a word soil. Wind. Can anybody read that one? That's a pretty simple one. Plant. Plant. Good job, guys. Sun, water, that one's a little different, wings, Fred, fern, wait a minute, Fred and fern, hmm, that's who our story's going to be about, fly, and there's weeds again. So if we want to think about words that may be rhyme with soil, like, ah, some of you might live in the town of foil, that rhymes with soil, toil, Plant. Let's think of something that rhymes with plant. I know of a little bug that rhymes with plant. That's right, ant. Good job. Shout out words that rhyme with sun. Bun. One. Yes, we used sun last week. Fun. Good. Fred. How about bed? Like as in flower bed. Well, I'm ready to start my story, and it actually is going to be about seed distribution and how the wind moves seeds and sometimes different seeds get different places like stick tights those little sticky things they'll stick to your socks those will stick there and when you walk somewhere else that's a seed and it'll drop off and plant itself in the ground wherever it drops off sometimes it just makes it to mom or dad's washing machine and has to drop off there also there's another way that seeds can get distributed distributed not just by wind not just by stick tights. Birds eat those seeds and they fly around. And every once in a while, we know what those birds do. It's kind of gross. They poop. And when they poop, that white poop comes down. And if you look, there might be little seeds in it. Sometimes it'll be different colors. And it's because of what the birds have eaten. And if they, if they take those seeds somewhere else and they drop that somewhere, maybe in the middle of another yard, that seed they picked up in your yard might go to someone else's yard. That's kind of cool, isn't it? So now let's talk about our story. I think uh, our story is going to be about a fairy family today. And boys, don't go, oh, a fairy family. I don't want to listen. Because just because it's about a fairy family doesn't mean there's not going to be fun boy stuff in here. Because this is about a fairy family that lived on the edge of Mr. Baker's garden. Mr. Baker had peas and corn and watermelons and cantaloupe and squash and carrots and spinach i know you all love spinach and lettuce and all kinds of wonderful things in his garden well 
Mr. Baker had to have help in his garden. So the fairy folk that lived in the garden had to take care of some of the things for Mr. Baker that he couldn't see. You see, he was very nearsighted. So when he went out to his garden, he didn't always see everything he needed to take care of. So the fairy folk lived in a turned over pot. Right underneath, they had a wonderful house with a fireplace and a kitchen and a really nice comfy beds and a nice comfy sofa. And they loved to just hang out in there and Little, little Fred and Fern lived in there with their moms and dad, their mom and dad, Fergus and Franny. Well, Franny was a fairy nurse, and she went and took care of all those fairy folk that got stick tight stuck to them. When we get stick tight stuck to us, those are those little sticky things, and they stick kind of like Velcro to our socks. And they really don't bother us. They're kind of scratchy. But think about if you were a little bit petty fairy, and a stick tight stuck to you. I mean, sometimes... The fairies have to have some stitches from those stick tights. And sometimes they have allergies just like you and I. And when they get out in all the seeds and all amongst all the things growing and the mold and the pollen, they start sneezing and sniffling and they need to go to the doctor. Well, that's where Franny worked. Well, Franny also, her husband, Fergus, worked in a plant where they um, took, they took the sunflower seeds out of shells and and they bagged them up for the little fairies for the winter. Fern and Fred were left at home sometimes. Fred was a teenager and he just liked to hang out, read books, play on his little fairy phone. He just liked to just hang out. Well, Fern would get so bored and he'd go, Fernie, quit bothering me. Fernie just wanted to go out and do her own thing. So one day, Fernie, Fred wasn't paying attention to Fernie, and he was a big, strong brother. And he used to play knights, and and he would go out and they'd pretend they had swords, or they would pretend that they were, they, they would go out and pick the little dandelions out of the field for the farmer. And every morning, they'd have to go walk in the fields together. But after that, he just did not want to play with Fernie. He was just, he'd been at home with her just too long. So Fernie decided she was going to go out on her own and just explore the neighborhood and see what was new. Well, when Fernie got outside of their wonderful little um, fairy house, she saw that there were these great winged seeds everywhere. Well, Fernie was tiny. She was so little that... When she grabbed a hold of one of these seeds, she didn't mean to, but the wind picked her up like they were wings, and she started flying across the yard. She flew far, far away from Mr. Baker's garden. She flew through the Jones backyard, and she flew through Mrs. Park's front yard, and she even almost landed on the swing set, almost hit the swing set, thought she was going to get to grab it. Nope, she went on past it. She went, she almost landed on a doghouse. And then all of a sudden, the wind stopped, and these winged seeds, she let go of them, and she fluttered to the air. I have to tell you something kind of sad about Fern. Her brother could fly, and her mom could fly, and her dad could fly, but Fernie was kind of young, and her wings just weren't big enough to fly yet. So this was really the first time she had flown without riding on her brother's back or her mom and dad carrying her. She was kind of scared. Because think about it, that was the first time you'd ever flown somewhere, and she had never been that far away from her fairy home. This was the first time, and she started to get kind of scared. When she dropped down, she dropped right into the middle of a great big flower. And she sat there on the flower thinking, what am I going to do? She started to cry. I just don't know how I'm ever going to get home. And poor little, poor little Fernie, since she'd never been away, she just started crying. I just wish Fred was here. About that time, a bee came along and landed right beside the flower. She saw the bee on its way and she hid underneath the flower like it was an umbrella. Kind of like that story Miss Woodson told the other day. And she came out from under to peek at the bee just as the bee was getting ready to take off. Guess what she did? She got really brave. 
that bee had pollen stuck all to it, so it didn't know. Fernie grabbed a hold of that bee's leg and flew off with the bee, hanging on as tight as she could. Well, the bee didn't stay close to the ground. The bee flew really high and higher and higher and higher until Fernie got stuck in a tree. She flew into a tree, really high tree. And Fernie got stuck in that tree. And she was still kind of crying. And But she, what she noticed was she was getting closer to Mr. Baker's garden again. She was getting closer to where her little fairy house was. And she thought, if only I could find another way to get over to my home. She started to yell, but she knew her brother Fred was just too into his stone in the house. He had already done his work for the day out in the garden, and he wasn't going to come and rescue her. She thought about it, and she thought about it, and she thought about it. And then she found a great big leaf. And she thought, well, those seeds carried me through the air. So maybe if I grab a hold of some leaves, they'll act like umbrellas too. So she grabbed a hold of one great big leaf and held it over her head, and she jumped she had to be so brave. And she jumped out of that tree and she floated all the way down to the edge of Mr. Baker's garden. Well, by this point, Fred had been in the house and he decided that he and Fernie needed to go pick some more dandelions out of the garden and start blowing the dandelion seeds all over the place in other areas so they didn't get in Baker's garden. Well, little Fernie. She, st she saw her brother come out of their fairy house just about the time she landed on the edge of the garden. And she said, Freddy, Freddy, I'm here. And he said, well, where have you been? He didn't even know she was gone oh, until just at that moment. So as Fernie walked towards Freddy, she said, Freddy, you won't believe it. I flew. I flew on my own. I flew on my own. And he said, Fernie. He said, let's have a flying lesson today. So that day, instead of sitting and playing on his phone in the house and hanging out, eating all the snacks and watching TV, they went outside and Freddie taught his sister, Fernie, how to fly. So she learned how to fly. And from that point on, anytime they were out collecting dandelions, she could pluck one and fly it to the edge where all the weeds were supposed to be. Uh oh, all those dandelion seeds away. So they would land where the weeds were and they wouldn't be in Mr. Baker's garden. The end. Now, boys and girls, we had a few characters in that story. We talked about the mom and dad, but they really weren't characters in the story, were they? They just went off to work and they weren't part of it. But we had Franny, or I mean, we had Fernie, and we had Freddy. And Fred and Fern were really our main characters, weren't they? And Fern found some, she found a bee, and she learned how to fly. And she realized that her tiny wings had grown big enough that she could fly. She used the wind to fly. She ta We talked about seeds and soil. So today, when you get out your journal, after Mrs. Duff's finished with story time, and you get out your journal, and you want a journal in there, you can journal about the little, little fairy. You could journal about what Fred was doing. You could journal about all the ways that she flew and all the places she went. Now, if you really want to get detailed, you could take a piece of paper, and you could fold it half, and half again. And when you do that and you open it up, you have what is called four squares. One, two, three, four. And you could draw what happened first in the story, and second in the story, and third in the story, and fourth in the story. Finally, that would be where the the end would go. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to use a plain journal page, you could draw a picture of what happens to the little fairy and write some words. Some of these words, maybe wind. She, she flew with the wind. The seed. She grabbed the seed and flew through the air. Whatever you want to do is the right thing to do in your journal.
journaling, boys and girls. Now, I'm going to close this journal because I have one more activity to show you before we go today. Pretty exciting activity. And I got some of these ideas from a story called The Tiny Seed, written by Eric Carle. He's one of my favorite. He's also the one that wrote, um, the author that wrote The Very Hungry Caterpillar. He also wrote, um, some, um, I, I'm trying to think of another one, The uh, Very um, Busy Spider. So there are several stories that he has written that we really love and we've used here in school. But this is the tiny seed, and it's about a seed that floats and it lands in all, all these places where it can't take root. But it finally plants itself. Well, seeds don't always plant themselves. Sometimes people have to plant them. And if you go out in your yard, you might see winged seeds like this because I'm telling you, they are all over. My, my whole yard is this color. It's this tan kind of whitish color, and these seeds are everywhere. So if you don't have any other seeds to plant, you could go find some winged seeds or some seeds outside. But I want to show you an activity that you can do. Now, I planted some seeds in dirt, and we put them down in there. And each year in our classroom, we usually have master gardeners come. But today I'm going to show you where you can just take a plastic baggie. And this is just a plain paper towel or a napkin. And you fold it, put it down inside of your baggie, just kind of like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but kind of towards the bottom there. And if you, you might have some seeds like I have. I have bean seeds and lima bean seeds and garden bean seeds. I have all kinds of seed packets in here, carrots, corn, all kinds of seeds in here. And your parents might have seeds like that if they've planted a garden, but... They might not either. You might just have things in the kitchen that you can use. These are plain brown beans that we'll probably put some in the crock pot either today or tomorrow. That sounds pretty good. We found a good cornbread mix we're going to have with it. And I'm just going to take three of these brown beads, beans out. And I think you probably can't see them, so I'm going to kind of show them. I don't know if you can see them there. And then I've got my baggie. I'm going to take my bag, and I'm going to stick my seeds right down in my bag. Can you see those, boys and girls? Yeah? And your moms and dads, if they're watching, they can do this. It's very simple. And then I've got some water right here. Just plain old water. Mr. Duff didn't finish his water. Got this off the cabinet this morning. Kind of wasteful. And we're just going to put a little bit right down inside of here. Not a lot. See? Not a lot. I didn't fill up my bag yet. I don't want too much. Just a little. Just maybe if you were going to take a sip of water that much. And then I'm going to kind of squish it around and make sure that my beans are where I can see them. So I can see my beans. I'm going to zip it, but not all the way. Because I don't want all the water, the air to get out. I don't want all the moisture to get out. But I don't want it to be wide open either. So I'm going to take a piece of tape or something to put this up in the window. And tape it on your window where... Some sun can get to it. And pretty soon you'll see that there's going to be maybe some little vines growing up here. But you'll get to see some roots growing out of the bottom of it as well. Now, we didn't plant this, so it's not going to grow because it's not going to produce any more beans because we didn't put it in soil. So if you actually want to plant something and your parents have some soil or you have soil at your house, you could actually plant your very own plant. And if you'll notice, I used one of Mr. Duff's water bottles. He's not very good with the environment. It's almost Earth Day. I'm going to have to talk to him about that. And we planted a bean seed, kind of similar to what I just planted, but this is a green bean. And this grew in about two weeks. My daughter, Eileen, and I planted this. If you notice, it's just in a water bottle. But you can get anything to plant in. I found this that my cousin Maureen gave me last year for Easter. It's just a little, little glass jar. And I'm just going to put some dirt in there. And then I could just put a little seed down inside there. But now, if I put this in the dark, it's not going to grow because plants need three things. They need sun, water, and soil. The soil gives them all the nutrients they need to grow. But if you just put it in soil and you put it in a dark place and it never sees the sun and it never gets watered, it's not going to grow. If you happen to water it, 
and put it in a dark place, guess what? Still not going to grow. But if you take this with the seed and the soil and the water and you put it in the sun, sunlight, it will grow. That is why we don't have gardens in the winter because our sun is too far from the earth to make our gardens grow. And boys and girls, we have about one minute left, and I just want to let you know, I'm happy that you joined me today. I did start a Facebook page. I noticed a lot of other teachers were doing that, and it's story time with Mrs. Duff. If you are not from Sequoia, if you're from Tulsa School or Foil or Catoosa or Adair or Inola or one of the around schools and you're able to see our broadcast and you drew me a wonderful picture in your journal today or you used some of these words or did a four square planted let me know you have a good week love you goodbye